Hello students, this is Amahesh Javalkar from Maratamdur Polytechnic and today I am posting my next video on analog electronic circuits in which I am going to explain class B type of power amplifiers. So the heading is class B power amplifier. Now in this we are going to see what is class B amplifier, what is class B push-pull amplifier, what is class B complementary symmetry push-pull amplifier. And what do you mean by crossover distortion? Okay, so here, if you go to see the explanation or definition of class B amplifier, when the a collector current flows only during the positive half cycle of the input signal, the power amplifier is known as class B power amplifier. Okay, that means through a transistor it is going to flow only during positive half cycle. At that time, the class B operation will come into picture. Okay. So if you see the explanation for this is, class B amplifier is a type of power amplifier where the active device conducts for one half cycle of the input signal. That means a conduction angle is from 0 to 180 degree for a class B amplifier. Okay, since the active device is switched off for the half the input cycle, the active device dissipates less power and hence the efficiency is improved. A theoretical maximum efficiency of class B power amplifier is 78.5%. Okay, so if you are having a transistor BJT which is going to conduct, then it will conduct for only one half cycle from 0 to 180 degree, not after that, okay. So then we will go to see the exact operation here. So if you take the output or characteristics of BJT, so you can see here, the Y axis is taken with collector current IC here. So this is your Y axis, which is taken with output collector current IC and X axis is with your collector emitter voltage VCE. Okay. And then you have drawn an AC load line, which is going to re re uh, represent the amplifier working with respect to AC load. And then here you have taken the operating point here. Here is the operating point. Operating point. Okay. Now operating point Q is here. And because of that, what will happen? If this is your input, if this is your input, okay, so input will be half cycles only here, okay, and that output you will get as half cycles only here. So the other half you are not going to get. So you are getting only the positive half cycles for every transistor to work, okay. So here also you are getting positive half cycle. So it is only half cycle because your operating point is here. Operating point is here and only the cycle which comes in this region is going to come as output here and cycle which go below that is this part. This part will be clipped. So here also you can see at the output this part will be clipped. So no negative cycle. So it is only positive half cycles which come through the active device. Okay. Now if you want a complete cycle then you can use two transistors. Okay. So here we can see the operation of class B push-pull amplifier, okay. Now in class B push-pull amplifier, we are using transistor T1 and T2, okay. So this is transistor T1, okay, and this is transistor T2 and both are your NPN transistor. This is NPN and this is also NPN, okay. So this is your base of transistor 2. This is base of transistor 1. So when the input signal is applied over here, when the input signal is applied to the primary of the transformer, this is the input signal. Okay, so it is applied here. So when the input signal is positive half cycle, at that time, the transistor T1 IB current will conduct, this will conduct because Secondary transformer, this side will be positive and this side will be negative. So positive half cycle means this transistor will conduct and you will get an output over here. You will get an output over here. 
okay so that output if it is given to the output or transformer then you will get a output over here okay so this is your first cycle half cycle when the input is negative half cycle when the input is negative half cycle okay at that time this point will be minus and this point will be plus so this transistor transistor t2 will conduct transistor t2 will conduct and you will get output like this which is when uh, coupled with the output you will get this output at the output so one transistor is going to conduct for half cycle and another transistor is going to conduct for the next half cycle so the complete full cycle is taken care by the two transistors here which is called as class b push pull amplifier now here for class b push pull amplifier if you want to see the efficiency so first we will see what is maximum output power for class b operation maximum output power delivered to the load is given by p not is equal to vce into ic which is equation number 1 then rms values of vce and ic are given as vce is equal to vcc by 2 and ic is equal to ic saturation by 2 substituting this in equation 1 we get p not is equal to that is maximum output power is equal to vcc into ic sat upon 4 so this is the equation for your maximum output power okay so here you can see vcc into ic sat okay so this is the equation for maximum output power then if you see what is dc input power pdc pdc is given as vcc into icc where vcc is equal to supply voltage and icc is equal to average supply current since each transistor draws current for half cycle now here every transistor is going to work for half cycle okay then icc is equal to ic sat upon pi therefore pdc that is dc input power is equal to vcc into ic sat upon pi okay so this is the equation for pdc now if you go to see the maximum overall efficiency eta naught max eta naught is given as p naught upon pdc so it is given as p naught upon pdc now if you substitute the value of p naught and pdc from our earlier equations we get vcc ic sat upon 4 upon vcc ic sat upon pi which is nothing but pi upon 4 which is nothing but 0 0.75 and in percentage it will be 78.5 percent which will be the efficiency for class b operation which will be efficiency for class b operation okay now a reason to go for class B complementary symmetry. Okay, now here we ha we had seen a simple class B push pull amplifier. Now we will go to see what is complementary symmetry push pull amplifier. Now to uh, the reason to go for complementary symmetry pu push pull amplifier is that the push pull amplifier which was just discussed improves efficiency, but the usage of center tap transformers make the circuit bulky, heavy, and costly. To make the circuit simple and to improve the efficiency, the or transistors used can be complemented. Means what? If instead of uh, using NPN, NPN or transistor, we'll use one transistor as NPN and other a transistor as PNP. So this will be two identical uh, transistors. Okay. So one is your NPN and one will be your PNP. Both these uh, transistors will have identical input and output characteristics and uh, that is why they are called as symmetry. They are called as complementary because one is NPN and the other one is PNP. Okay. So here you can see one transistor is NPN and other one is PNP. So here you are having NPN. So here you can see it is NPN and here it is PNP. P. Okay, so this is the base, this is the collector, this is the emitter, and here this is the emitter, this is the collector, and this is the base. Okay, and here you are going to give the input signal. Okay, input signal. When the input is positive half cycle, when the input is positive half cycle, this is NPN. So this transistor is going to conduct, and output you will get as this positive half cycle. 
when the input is negative half cycle this is p and p that means this base will be driven and this transistor will conduct and output you will get as this negative half cycle so as a, a complete picture when both the transistor conduct simultaneously when first npn will conduct and then pnp will conduct again npn will conduct and then pnp will conduct so here at, across the load you will get the complete cycle one will be given by the npn transistor and other will be given by the pnp transistor so here there is no uh, requirement of transformers whenever the input cycle is positive the first uh, transistor is going to go into a, a conduction and whenever the input cycle is negative the second transistor is going to go into a conduction okay so uh, that is how it is called as class b complementary symmetry push pull amplifier complementary means it is having npn and pnp transistor symmetry because both are identical their input and output characteristics are identical okay so the advantage here for complementary symmetry push pull amplifier class b are as follows as there is no need of center tap transformers the weight and cost are reduced equal and opposite input signal voltages are not required okay and a disadvantage is that first one it is difficult to get a pair of transistor npn and pnp that have similar characteristics practically this is a problem and second one is we require both positive and negative supply voltages and now here students we will uh, go to see the a problem faced in class b power amplifier which is called as crossover distortion okay now here uh, what will happen is a transistor in a class b push pull amplifier are biased at cutoff that is when the a dc bias voltage is zero the input signal voltage must exceed the barrier voltage before a transistor conducts now this barrier voltage will be 0.7 volt for silicon and 0.3 volt for germanium because of this there is a time interval between the positive and negative alternations that is positive and negative half cycles of the input signal when neither transistor is conducting not even the pnp or npn not even the first transistor or second transistor will conduct now the uh, resulting a uh, distortion in the output signal is common and it is called as crossover distortion so here you can see so here you can see students ki whenever there is a positive half cycle here now here you are having your positive half cycle and when you come to this point okay now at this point both the a uh, transistor are in cut off region they are stopped because the next transistor will conduct only when the emitter base junction is forward biased and for emitter of a base emitter junction to be forward biased the knee voltage that is 0.3 for germanium and 0.7 for silicon should be overcome and then only you can start conducting for the next negative half cycle so that time period where that knee voltage is overcome is a gap even here you can see when you are going from negative to positive so there is a gap again here you can see there is a gap so this is called as crossover distortion okay uh, thank you students for uh, watching the class b operation